Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Elhamdülillahi Rabbil Alemin. Allahümme salli ala Seyyidina Muhammedin ve ala Ali Seyyidina Muhammed. My name is Zain Al-Haddad and I'm from Malaysia. I lived in Tarim for about five years from 2014 to 2018. The year before I moved to Tarim, I went there twice. Um, well, the last trip before I moved to Tarim was when I went for the Dawra. The Dawra of the year 2013. And it was that trip that made me and my wife at that time, um, before we had our child, to move to Tarim the following year. So it, it was a visit that impacted us. Um, many things happened in that trip. It struck me. It was, was, it was my fourth trip to Tarim, but that trip was for Daura. And it was remarkable. What had occurred to me was that the, there were teachers and then there were the people who attended the Daura. But around that, there are people who are putting together the Daura. And who are the people who put together the Daura? The administrative staff of Dara Musafa and around. The other teachers, the cook, the driver, the cleaners and so forth. And also that we were largely spending a lot of time with existing students of knowledge in Tarim. So these are people that back home, we would call them Ustad or Sheikh or Ustada and so forth and so forth. But where at the Daura, there were students, full-time students who live in Yemen, who live in Tarim, and they were serving us. A bunch of guys who came there for fun or not for fun, not knowing much, not knowing head or toe, commanding them, instructing them, asking them, can you please buy me a SIM card? Can you please buy me a help me get if this book photocopied and so forth uh, and the way they brought themselves was wouldn't present you that point out front it was after some reflection i thought hang on these guys who are volunteering on our behalf maybe some of them getting helping with the laundry or getting us a cup of water or cleaning up the plate after we've eaten these are people back home whom we will call teachers but here they are they're serving and they're just serving one particular character struck me, and I think that was one of the key, key moments that struck me about being the Daura. That after Maghrib, um, we would have a class. And this particular class was taking place once or twice a week in Habib Omar's house, in his guest area. And the teacher was Habib Kadim. And Habib Kadim was someone I met in Malaysia many times. So I've gotten quite familiar with him in that sense. So people were sitting in the guest room, preparing, waiting for the class, chit-chatting, relaxing, waiting for Habib Kadim to come. And the volunteer student that was in charge of that class that day, what I mean volunteer student, I mean the Ustad, he was standing outside Habib Omar's house at the entrance, waiting to receive Habib Kadim. Right? Something which I didn't feel was necessary, in my opinion, at that time. And he could be there reading a book or he could be somewhere else reading a book because why would he, be, why would he want to enter this class? Habib Kadim teaching a bunch of visitors some basic things which he's probably studied five years ago. But he was there because he was there to serve. And, and you know, when, when we walked into Habib Omar's house, there was, you know, people take off your slippers and it's scattered somewhat, somewhat neat and somewhat scattered. And when I walked out, to the entrance of Omar's house because he was still waiting for Habib Karim to come I saw that this chap, this guy I think he was British Somali I can't, I'm still trying to find him to be honest until now because I want to thank him for what he did I just saw, I saw him, he was taking time alone not instructing anyone, not asking anyone for help he was just minding his own business while waiting for Habib Karim he was arranging the slippers outside Habib Omar's house and he, you know, just to make sure it was neat, it was well done. In Allah Jamal Hibul Jamil. Sorry, uh, that Allah is uh, in Allah Jamil Hibul Jamal. That Allah is beautiful and He loves beauty. So just the arrangement of the shoes, which nobody really paid attention to, most places, most background that we come from. And it, it struck me so much, and, and I it inspired me to want to do that. 
So put put aside this thing that you want to even you know memorize books and learn fiqh and learn this and have high stations of tasawwuf and so forth. That this guy took the effort. And later, as I begin to notice, and even when I was living in Tarim later, when I was trying to be with the students there, it was a common thing that these students, many of the students, Ustad, Sheikh, or whatever back home you would call them, this is what some of them would do in their spare time. And they would walk and they would see a bunch of slippers just not well arranged. And I saw this in the homes in Tarim as well, with the local Tarimis. That you would enter a gathering and people would be rushing to enter a maulid or whatever, and the shoes are everywhere. And when you walk out, all the shoes are neatly aligned. So someone had taken the effort to do that. And some of these people were not students. They were not students of knowledge. They were just regular people, for lack of a better word. Uh, and from that, you could see that how the daura and the school and the seminary and the madrasa and Islam as a whole teaches us how to orientate in our lives. It's not that I'm a teacher, I'm a teacher. You're a student, you're a student. You're an engineer, you be an engineer. No, we can play multiple roles and we know how to handle that situation. Right? I mean, the guy, imagine that guy who arranged slippers, he could have been sitting outside Habib Omar's house playing with his phone. I mean, he could, have, he could have spent all that time on WhatsApp catching up. But he took the time, maybe possibly reciting some Arad while he's doing it to, 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 for his revision and arranging slippers. And that, that was really one of the key points that made me, you know, I want to be in Tareem. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. Um, may anyone who is following the Dawra or interested in just learning Islam, wherever it may be, locally, internationally, may you be granted further openings and keep everyone else in your prayers, Muslims in our era, in your local area, beyond your local area, in our time and the times to come. And may we receive the gifts that was been given to us by the people before us, who was given by the people before them, who was given by people before them, all to the time of the companions who received it from the greatest uh, of gift being in the presence of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, Allah Fahmeen, Kum, Jazakum Wa Khair.